All right, so recently it was brought to my attention that you can do more than just kind of flat engraving with a fiber laser. You can actually get some depth to it. And if you're using the right file type and the right process, you can get contours and stuff that you would typically think of with CNC machining, but you can use the laser as the CNC machine, let's say. So after a little bit of digging and some investigation into the right settings, and especially for everything with this machine, this is a 20 watt fiber laser, which is again, the entry level uh, kind of classification of fiber lasers. I found a lot of videos where people were using 60 and even 80 watt fiber lasers, and they get deeper results much faster. But I think you'll see as we move through the video that you can get quite a lot with a 20 watt fiber laser as well. So as I mentioned, the kind of the setup of the graphics is really where I found the most work. Um, once you get it dialed in on the laser and you get your settings keyed in, then it's just rinse and repeat from that point on. But getting the file prepared so that it can be executed correctly was more of the challenge. So I'm gonna do some voiceover here and show you some on-screen stuff. I'm not gonna do the entirety of it because it is a little bit tedious and I found it to be potentially aggravating, but it's not, it's not hard. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing because as you're going in and making these selections in the graphical software, if you misclick, you're gonna have to back up and try it again. It'll make sense here in a minute. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is find a file and I'm gonna use the uh, coin that had the single face on it as my example here. So I am out at Colts 3D and let's search for that. And so normally I would select free right here because I didn't really want to pay for anything for this test, but there are a lot of other very interesting designs out there that are pay for, but this is the one that I used. So I will grab that and download it. And after I sign in, we'll have that file and that's the one that we're going to move on to the next step with. All right, so we have our STL file. Now we need to convert it to a PNG. And there's this nifty little website, STL to PNG, that has a converter. And I'll have this link down below so you can see it. Um, gonna adjust a few things here. I'm gonna bump up the resolution to kind of give us a little bit better detail. And then the depth offset, that's kind of you're trying to gauge the STL file and how much depth you wanna pursue. Um, I have gotten really good results with around 15% on most things, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I know from previous experience, the orientation up here, uh, if I take it as it is right now, it's actually going to be a side view of the coin or the medallion, so I know in this case I need to do front, um, and that's just something that you can play with. Interesting note about this website, if you do any of this uh, settings at the top, and it's not exactly what you want, you're gonna to wanna to reload the web page and start over. So those are simply the three settings that I needed to do, or I'm gonna go choose file. This is the uh, STL file that I got from Colts 3D once you unzip it. And I'm just gonna select that and hit open. Now, this is going to take a while, so I won't bore you with the details. Um, I'll bring you back once this is done. All right, so that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna click download image. And so we have downloaded that PNG file. And so we can move on to the next step. All right, so I've opened up the newly minted PNG file into my graphics software. And I'm using Affinity Photo, which is a very similar to Adobe Photoshop, but not near as expensive. I believe when I purchased this, it was $50 and it's very Photoshop-esque. But uh, again, I didn't want to continue to pay the Adobe subscription plan. So this is what I'm using. I'm sure the features that are in this software are in Adobe. I can't tell you where to find them, but if you have Adobe, you probably already know where they are. So what we're gonna be using here is the selection brush tool. And I'm gonna make sure I've got snap to edges and soft edges selected. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to select what I want to keep. And so if I start clicking, you'll kind of see uh, what I'm ultimately trying to do is grab the circular medallion and everything inside of it. Now, this is going to take a few minutes. And if you get kind of ahead of yourself, uh, it, I have seen the selection tool kind of go out and grab something uh, like a jagged edge of the outline of the circle and it kind of messes up and so the undo button can be your friend if that happens to you once you get a big enough selection made then you can kind of drag it to the inside and get larger pieces uh, but I'm gonna work my way around the edge of this circle and uh, we'll go from there all right so now that we finally have the entire perimeter I can just go in and clean this up. So let me let me look around a second, make sure we don't have any anomalies. I think that looks good. So now still inside the selection brush tool, I'm going to hit refine. And my output, notice the selection that we left behind went red. I'm going to change this to new layer with mask. And we're going to hit apply. And so now we just have the circular image and this background or the corners basically have gone transparent. And so we're going to save this as. Since I've already done this once before, I'm going to save it as a, an affinity photo picture and then I'm going to export it back as a PNG file. PNG, our resolution that we set on the other website where we converted it from an SDL to a PNG. We'll export this and Versace 2. Disregard any misspellings you may see. And so now we have the cleaned PNG file that is ready to go. All right, on to the last step before we actually start letting the laser do some work. So I'm inside of Lightburn and I've got my uh, laser selected here and that's why we see the appropriate dimension here. We've got 110 by 110. So I'm gonna go File Import and this is the misspelled item that we're going to use. Notice it's rather large. It's 705 by 705 millimeters. We only have 110 by 110 to work with, but we are also using coins that have roughly, uh, we can easily put a one inch, but I think I remember doing this at 30 millimeters, if I remember correctly. So we'll put that in. So we've got our representation of the image here. So We'll use the laser on the comm marker B4 to line this up as best we can. I'm going to double click in this speed and power section right here in this window. And this is some important stuff. So I'm doing 15,000 millimeters a minute at 75% power. And my line interval is very tight. It's 0 0.0254. Uh, and that gives us a DPI of a thousand. This is kind of important. Make sure you've got a DPI of at least a thousand. We need a scan angle of 45 and this is very critical. The image mode, it needs to be 3D sliced. That needs to be selected. And then we've got our number of passes. Most of these I did in a hundred passes and um, that's really it for this. So once all those settings are set and you can verify those here, then we would hit frame to actually outline it and align up our target. In this case, we're using a brass medallion or coin blank uh, that I got from Amazon. All that info will be down below. And then we'll just let it ride. All right, so I have this piece of anodized aluminum bar. It's probably 3 16 by one and a half or two inches, something like that. And I've got a lot of different samples on here. Some were flat, and this was before I really figured out that the better quality the file, the better result you're gonna get. And so the flat stuff doesn't really come across well at all. 
Um, but this was my first real success. This is like a circle medallion with like a horse's head and a nice uh, design around the outside perimeter. That looks fantastic. You'll see it here on the screen. I did try a Bitcoin thing, but it was one of those flat files, so it didn't, it didn't really look right. So from there, the next success I had was this uh, tri-face, like the face in the front and then two on the sides. That looks absolutely fantastic. And then this other medallion with this face on it. Man, it, it looks really, really good in the aluminum. I'll show you it in brass here in a second. But these were kind of my test things. You can see all the ones that didn't work. So I was just figuring it out what was gonna work. So from there, I moved on to these little brass coins. And uh, I got these as blanks on Amazon. I'll put the link uh, down with my resources down below. But this was a fairly flat STL file, so I didn't get the definition that I was looking for as far as the depth. I did kind of polish this one up on the buffer uh, and then cleaned it in the ultrasonic cleaner, which had mediocre results. But it gave it some character and um, it's not bad. It could be better and that might be something I go back and work on because that, that's kind of neat. So from there, I went to this awesome face, and this one, unfortunately, I was working on a computer beside the laser while the laser was going. I had some little deflectors and shields up, so I wasn't seeing the laser do its work. And I went to move something, and I hit, I hit the piece that the medallion was sitting on. I should have had it locked down, or at least had some sort of, you know, fixture or something set up there, but I didn't. And so I bumped it, so I killed it real fast, so it wouldn't ruin it. And it is actually pretty, pretty doggone good. Um, it would have been better if it would have finished. But anyway, I've still got another side that I can use for test on that. And so I let it run the whole time and didn't accidentally hit it. And I've, I've actually got this one in the little plastic case that these coins came in because it looks wonderful. And the definition and the 3D-ness to it when you're like looking at it, it's, it's kind of trippy, but um, it definitely turned out really, really well. And then the absolute boss of the file was this horse's head with a very similar design around the outside. And um, man, did that turn out. And it's got some serious, serious depth to it. I believe it had 125 passes on this one. This was the only anomaly. Most of the other ones I got really good results with 100 passes. I did, with this little chunk of, uh, this is cold rolled steel, this little chunk, I did that tri-face, and this first one was 100, and the second one was 200, and there's a lot more depth than the 200 one, obviously, but one's lighter than the other, and so you get a little bit more expression with the lighter uh, 100 passes, but you get more depth with the 200 passes, but all of these things turned out really, really well. I kind of had an idea that I wanted to try, and that it was, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a piece of material that I can use, but I'm like, could you, could you laser a stamp and like stamp foil with it or stamp copper or something else? If you did it out of steel, just to, I may want to try that. I didn't have a slug of material that I th thought would be good at, for a stamp. And then I don't have a really good way to clean that surface to make it perfectly flat for the laser. So something I wanna try in the future, but this was kind of a fun experiment and I got some really good results. So I just wanted to pass that along that uh, even, even a 20 watt machine still has a lot of capability when it comes to doing very different type, not just flat etching. It can do some 3D work as well. So I hope you enjoyed this very quick video. And if you have any questions, leave those down below. I'll have links to the laser, the coins, uh, everything I've used in the video so you can see that information down below. But uh, take care. I hope to see you again.